Okay, Post Woke had this up a while back, and she needs to get some credit for this one because, sorry, I'm moving around a bit, because it's important. And I'm going to let it talk for itself for a little while, and then I'm going to let you know what I think it might be. And I don't know, it's pure speculation. God only knows how many times I have to say this now with all these people at me. But anyway, I don't care. I'll say it all day long. Um... So, I'm going to make it larger so you can see it. But this is really odd. And I don't know how, how many people have picked up on this, but post woke she's a smart one, man. She does. She's got some she got a good noggin on her. All right, here we go. That's the part that is interesting to me. Records from University of Idaho pertaining to other individuals, including students, faculty and staff, and records from the university's Office of Civil Rights Investigation. So what are they talking about here? Exactly. Well, let's read a little further. By way of background, the records of the University of Idaho are protected by various federal and state laws, including, you guys may have heard of, the FERPA law, which is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And this is one of the reasons why we aren't able to find out what happened to Brian Koberger when he was in high school and why maybe he was uh, kicked out of that program where he was a young army ranger or something because of the FERPA Act. It protects children's school records from prying eyes like us, right? Which is fair. I totally understand that. But uh, it says the state has been advised by legal counsel from the University of Idaho that FERPA, prote FERPA protections do not survive the death of the subject ind individual. So basically, uh, the defendant, the, uh, the defense and the prosecution were advised by the University of Idaho that FERPA protections don't survive the death of the subject individual. So in other words, now that the students have passed, FERPA no longer applies, which means they can get the records on the students. The state and the defense can get the records on the students. Why would this matter? I'm not entirely sure. What more would it tell us other than their major, their grades, um, what classes they took, could that possibly give some insight into if they knew Brian Koberger, if you believe he is the guilty party, or could it give us any insight into anything, right? So the university is saying, well, you can have these records now that they're deceased because FERPA doesn't include the death of the student. But it says, it goes on to say, however, other personal privacy protections remain, including, quote, protected information as defined in Idaho Criminal Rule 16D1, which is what I just read to you before, this one right here. This still pertains, okay, 16D1, protected information, contacts, uh, email, or of a witness or of a spouse or children or anything like that or any of those persons regularly uh, and the places where any of those persons regularly go such as school and places of employment and worship okay so it's saying that this other information is protected here okay will cover 
what uh, people may get and therefore it should be redacted, right? So the state will redact the information in accordance with Idaho Criminal Rule 16D. That's fine. We don't want to see their, we don't need to see their email addresses and their cell phone numbers and the address of their parents. That doesn't make sense, right? Anyway. But it says, as to University of Idaho records other than those pertaining to the victims, Madison, Kaylee, Ethan, and Zana, the parties stipulate to the entry of a protective order limiting access, let me just put this back up, limiting access, sorry, I lost sorry. my spot here. The party Trade stipulates the entry of a protective order limiting access of those records to direct, to direct review by defense counsel and with the provision that any further dissemination or use of these records would be prohibited absent a specific court order or further stipulation. The parties recognize that further dissemination or use may require redaction. We already know that. So what is this about, right? I, I don't understand. Uh, but basically it's saying, okay, they're protected under FERPA, but because they died, they're not protected under FERPA. So they're actually protected under Idaho Criminal Rule 16 D1. Okay, fine, right. So why do they need to make a stipulation about this, right? Who, who, it's not like the state or the defense wants to go out there and tell people their addresses, phone numbers, et cetera. We already know this, right? But I think there might be something more here because it then says as to records from the university other than pertaining to the victims, the parties are stipulating to the entry of a protective order limiting access of those records to direct review. So if there's anybody else that's a student that they're looking at, they want to limit the access to that. Well, who, who else is that? Well, that would be the survivors, right? The survivors, Bethany and Dylan. Okay, fine. But to me, the most interesting part is records from the University of Idaho pertaining to other individuals, including students, faculty, staff, and records from Idaho's Office of Civil Rights Investigation. Well, what does the Idaho Office of Civil Rights Investigation do? Here we go. At the university? Well, that's what this Ooh, is yeah. right here. Their initiatives and priorities, their responsible areas and duties, access and inclusion, complaint investigation, Title IX coordination, monitoring gender equity in all UI terms and conditions of employment, includes sexual discrimination and sexual harassment prevention and compliant responses. Could this be that they they had a grievance and that they turned it into the university about maybe the campus cops or about say Rosendahl taking her ID, them doing that kind of stuff, you know, pain going up there, someone pouring out their trulies, whatever it may be. Could it be that they, they put in a grievance with the university, if it was campus police, you know, like threatening that they were going to lose their funding and their housing and that they were going to be la da 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 da. It's one thing after another. Could this be a grievance that was that was voiced by any or all of them getting together, maybe as a maybe as a group, being threatened? It could be. Why wouldn't it be? I'm one of those people that would have been pissed off. I would have been the first one to go in to do that. Because that's not fair, you know? You pay good money to go to a place to get your education, and you should not be harassed for stupid things. Because they have their own narrative. And they want big muscles. And think they carry big sticks. That's not cool. Especially when the guys are getting different treatment. So what if the girls got together and they, they, they were seeking some type of, ju you know, justice with this? 
And what if they didn't like it? What if, you know, what if that made them mad? Not the girls, but, you know. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. As I always do. What is that? No, what was that? Um, that was like... Was that... Maybe I'm thinking of a cheer we used to do in school. Um, no, that's got to be like a Star Wars song. So what is it? It's, it's, a, it's a theme to something. Da, 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 da. Oh, is it Rocky? Is it Rocky? Am I thinking Rocky up the steps? <laughs> that might be what I'm thinking. <laughs> All right. Maybe not, but I think so. I don't know why that popped into my head, but anyway, thought I'd share. Okay, so let's listen to the rest of this. This sounds really interesting to me, and I have not heard this document until she brought it up a couple weeks ago. I tell you, you need to go watch her. She talks about things nobody else does, and she's smart. She's smart. She knows what she's talking about. Like, what's the one that she just did a while back? Um, it had to do with like healthcare stuff and knowledge of different things through healthcare. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I, I'll see if I can link it in there. Man, she goes through some stuff. That's really interesting. Like it's sh- like yearly. You guys should go sub, sub, likes, subscribe. I mean, you know, do all that stuff. Comment, share, because um, she doesn't. She does her. She's she's worthy, man. She is. She is really. I like her. They, they do education and outreach, and they follow a university wide policy and procedure. So. What is in these records potentially regarding any of the Idaho students that have passed or any of the Idaho students that have been involved uh, or investigated? You know what? I'm going to pause it just for a second because that just dawned on me that if this is the case with this, if they can't bring up these records in, in, you know, living or deceased, if these people, if the law enforcement or campus police or whatever is involved, that is nuts, you guys. That means they're getting away with every last living thing they're doing. That is absolutely fucking disgusting. And why? God, it makes me wonder, really seriously, if all of the universities are like this, if they, if this is what, if this is what you have to do to get an education, you have to like walk, I mean, I'm the type of person that knowing this kind of stuff, it would have caused me distress because it would mean like anything you did, they could do something like say, say you were just walking home one night, right? And you know, campus police, you know, thought you were drunk, pulled, you know, said, okay, get in the car. I need to take you back to your sorority. If you were in a sorority, I wouldn't have been. But anyway, you get in. So this has happened before. This is a true story. Not that she was walking home, but she was outside of her sorority. And this is the second time the same cop came and talked to her. This time he took her in his car to a park, made her do things, said that she he wouldn't turn her in to the to the um university or to the or to Greek row if she did what he what he said and so she did and she had evidence that he left on her sleeve and it still he still didn't get a guilty plea and meanwhile the cops harassed her i mean extensively the things that they did, notes on her car, calling, calling her home phone, leaving, um, pulling over her friends and her, and her um, sitting outside of her place and watching her, just following her, driving, following her, literally driving slow, following her, um, just one thing after another. This is what they did. So if your kids aren't protected against this kind of stuff with with what with a, someone who is supposed to be there to protect you you're the they're not doing their job. They're supposed to be protecting you. 
Yet, you, obviously, with what I'm looking, hearing right here, is you can't even protect yourself no matter what happens. Because this is muted. It's muted. It's swept. It's popped into the incinerator. You know, no can see. No can talk about. No can see. You don't get a no. Because anything that taints the name of the university puts a not so good mark on like the polls. It's, I don't even know what they call it, but it's it's a where they rate the universities and like like the maps of the, where the crimes are and what the crimes were and all that kind of stuff. So that's why they steer away heavily from the hazing thing and from ODs because it puts a really bad name on their heads and in that whatever that annual whatever they do that right there it truly makes me wonder if this wasn't a serious OD like if there was not several that OD'd I mean that same day there was three ODs two of them were out away from the area I also think that they that they move them like they don't want them at the frat house if it happens there they don't want them at the sorority house if it happens there because if it does they get a freaking mark I, I mean they are that they get in trouble some of them in big trouble sometimes they even close the freaking whole thing down the whole house and that right there what it does is it not only taints the name of the sorority or frat you were in but it also gives you this bad name and it gives all the alumni a bad name it gives the university the bad name it and with them being the higher ups it's reflected i believe more intensely on the one that's at the lowest of the, the bottom of the to, uh, totem pole so the weaker yep i mean like it's like you know like they say the weaker necessarily doesn't survive because the you know the higher ups the stronger they stick together they know that they know they've been there this is a routine for them this is this is a daily routine this is just they could do this in their sleep but you're not so seasoned right so in order to get around this and not get in trouble when things like this happen in my opinion pure speculation I believe they relocate people that have that are in trouble going through trauma whatever hence the reason my god all these kids walking around by themselves report of a girl walking down the road can't can't stand up by herself no one around port of a boy a man whatever there's tons of them recently a couple days ago there was a report of a guy carrying a passed out girl over his shoulder I think it was Nez Pierce up by the Sigma Chi I hope he was carrying her somewhere to be helped and not to hide but the thing is if he were to help and have to tell the truth then everybody would be pissed at him he would be the one in trouble and then who knows what was going to happen to him right who knows eventually what would happen to him and everybody there's people out there that might say oh that doesn't happen holy my god read the news go not the not the well even on even on the news regular news they do have like some talks about hazing stuff rarely because you got to find them other places because they don't talk about them and they are there they happen all the time and wazoo Man, they happen at Wazoo a lot. A lot. I mean, just the same year, three, four, I believe, passed away that same year, at the 2022. One of the boys had only been there for four months, I think. Yeah. So if you can't, so okay so back to him getting her to help so getting her help he would have been putting himself in such danger because he's told you can't tell anybody 
you, you know, you, this can't be known. You know, you got to get wherever you got to get her, whatever. You got to get rid of her, put her, you know, whatever it is. Or he took her to his to this place or whatever to, to get her through it or whatever, if, the, if that's possible at all. Which someone could pass on that one. If that's the case, what are they going to do? Probably relocate her. This is sickening. This is people. This is people looking at other people as being disposable. As like no really. There's no. What is there? There's no nothing. I mean, it's like these feelings. Where, where's, where's that? Where's that caring for your your fellow human being? Your fellow. I mean, God, what is going on? And I don't think it's going to get any better. I don't. We've already seen it. They are covering stuff up. The things around there within an inch of their lives. Like literally, they are, they don't even have anything to cover it up with anymore and they're covering it up. I mean, it's like, they're pointing the finger somewhere else. Oh, what over here? Over there? Over here? If they can't, cover it themselves or make it plausible as it's you know you can only cover stuff so much it's kind of like what my grandma used to say she's like when you can't you know pretty soon you know it all it's all it all stinks it all comes out you know in the laundry she says like just like daniel boone you know every time he'd come into town you know he'd have to get a bath and all that stuff and the first you know and typically they worried about food first. They Sometimes they worried about getting a woman first, getting a haircut, whatever. And that all came as one little plan. All, you know, you get the, everything came all together. The bath, the haircut, because they did everything, right? And then you put on the pit stick. Well, they didn't have it back then. But, you know, well, if you come into town and you don't, and you just keep putting the pit stick on and you don't take the shower and you don't, or the bath, and you don't get, you know, your hair cut and all that kind of stuff, then it, it doesn't cover it anymore. It just stinks. It just freaking stinks. And when it gets to stinking that bad, rarely does any room spray or anything you do, essential oils, whatever it may be, air out the room, open the doors, whatever, that stink don't go away. That stink is there. That stink is deep, dark, and dirty. I still, it makes me wonder why Rosendahl left Bellingham up there as being a, as an officer. He's only there for less than a year and a half. Why wasn't he there longer? What happened? If anything, just thinking out loud, pure speculation, my opinion, just my thoughts, not blaming anybody, not saying he did or he didn't. Just wondering. Uh, you know, that there's students there. Is there something here? Is there something here that they are hiding from us that they or feel they need to hide from us and don't want us to know about? I could be totally off. I'm not an attorney, obviously, but I, w I don't know. Did an attorney do something about this? Does anybody know? All right, well, that's it. Let me know what y'all think. And hope you found this interesting. If you know what it's about, you want to drop a comment, I'd appreciate it. And for now, let's just rock on, party out with this guy here, actually. Yippee! This guy is just, you know, you know how I feel about this guy. Oh, I know how I feel about just that guy. Just chilling out. Everybody needs to chill out, right? Especially now. Let's just do a little daydream here. Then. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for having us, Post.
Okay. So what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think it could be? And how diabolical is that? If they have evidence of nefarious behavior, which we've seen already, it's on the body cams. We've already seen it. We already know about all the Wazoo cops that were let go pr right when right when all the stuff started happening with Brian. You know, right right when they found his car, like right then and there, right there. That's when all those cops in that um, the campus got in trouble. Cops that are friended in photographs, hanging out with the same fellas that are named as being roommates with Copaca. You tell me there's nothing fishy there. That particular cop, officer, MK, Matt, he took re early retirement. He'd been doing what he'd been doing for two years, caught two years prior to 2022. Hence the reason why they, the captain, the assistant captain, or maybe, maybe it was chief and assistant chief, one of the, one of the C words. Oops, yeah, I said the C word. Anyway, the actual one, then the assistant, and then the chief or the, or the captain, whatever one. So three of those guys plus this guy, early retirement, and the other guys got in trouble because they knew about it and they did not do anything about it for two years until it got brought back up by somebody else again on the out, outside, maybe a student. He was grooming, grooming Wazoo girls, taking them places and doing things with them on duty, on his working, during his working hours. For two years, they knew about this. They let it happen. Well, guess what? That same officer, at the same time, was back and forth to Moscow Police Department because it's in their annual report. So you tell me these guys aren't sister, brothers, back and forth with these departments, doing what they're doing and knowing full well what's going on. They're both scratching each other's backs. Rubbing each other's feet. Feeding each other grapes. Walking each other's dog. Tapping each other's beer keg, whatever they're doing. I don't know. But you know what? It's pretty obvious that's what's going on. When you really look at it and you really put two and two together, it only takes two and two. You don't need all those other things. It's blatantly obvious. Blatantly obvious. God help. God help this country. Seriously. God help the kids that are trying to get an education. Can you imagine having to go through hell week, all that kind of stuff they have to do and still try to keep your grades up and keep sane and stay sane at the same time? And try not to get some type of reputation because of this, because of that. It doesn't matter what you do. If you do it, your reputation. If you don't do it, your reputation. Man, alive. I just, I wouldn't have been able to take the stress. I couldn't have. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I would have folded, man. I think. Maybe I wouldn't have. I don't know. Anyway, love you guys. I'm going to I'm going to uh, link this in the description. Please go check her out. She's awesome. And she deserves she, recognition. She's got some really great stuff on there. And she's just got a different outlook than most. And it's, it's, a, it's a sane outlook. It is really sane. It's like, it's solid, in my opinion. And, and she... She has good questions. Like, she gets you thinking. She gets you thinking. And it's a good thing. Okay? All right. Peace, everyone. Love you bunches. Thanks, Post. Thanks for sharing your man. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.